Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine Crick. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. On this episode, I'm going to teach you how to be free from demonic soul ties. Now, a demonic soul tie is when you have had a relationship with someone that wasn't godly, where you were in a relationship with someone where the person you were in a relationship with had influence from the enemy, where they weren't surrendered to God, they were opening up doors to demons, they could have demons themselves. And when you are in a relationship with someone, there is a tie in the spiritual realm. There's a actual attachment. And so there could be a demonic hold on your life, a demon, a demonic tie that has to do with that relationship you were in. So first of all, these soul ties can be in friendships. The Bible says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffers harm. So if you are not walking with those who are wise, wise in terms of they are surrendered to God, they're seeking God, they're not opening up doors to the demons, you will be wise, you will be protected, you'll be safe. But if you bring close to you in life people who are fools, fools simply meaning they're not surrendered to God, they're opening up doors to demons, they're not living pure and holy, then you will suffer harm. It's, it's bound to happen. When you are friends with someone, there really is a connection in the spiritual realm to that person, like a tie. And there could be good ties, there could be bad ties. We see David and Jonathan in the Bible. That is a beautiful, good friendship, a good covenant, a good tie. They actually intentionally made a covenant, God-led covenant, so that there would be a strong tie between them. Because the Bible says, when two of you ask of something, I will do it. We are a body of Christ. We are stronger together. We are stronger when we are united in the same vision and connected in that vision and working together, not separately, individually, but together to make that vision go forth. So that's what happened with Jonathan and David. Jonathan saw that God had chosen David and Jonathan believed in what God had called David to. He believed in the anointing upon David and he wanted to help the work of God go forth, help God's will to be done through, through David. He wanted to be a part of that help in that love on David, build him up so he could be a strong, the strongest uh, anointed king possible, especially because with big anointing comes big attack as Jonathan's own father was literally trying to kill David. So God put this beautiful passion in Jonathan for David. Uh, it was so godly. It was so beautiful. It was, it was, it was not a earthly love, earthly friendship relationship. Like it wasn't like, oh, I like, it, Jonathan wasn't like, I like David because his personality is cool and he's fun to hang around. Like it wasn't that kind of worldly, like love friendship kind of thing, but it was so godly. It was so purposeful for the kingdom. And so God led Jonathan to even make a covenant um, with David. And he was saying such powerful words like, he, he says he loved David as himself. So that was a strong tie between them. And because they had made it a covenant, because they purposely made a tie, that would make them stronger together for the purpose of the kingdom. So it's good to have ties to people whom God is leading you to make ties to. But then there are bad ties that can lead you away from God's will, can make demons to come in your life, make bondage to come simply by who you're associated with, simply by who you've attached yourself to. The Bible says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? So God clearly says, do not be yoked with unbelievers. And really a meaning of this in scripture is also do not be yoked tightly with those who are not surrendered to God. You should be very careful and intentional who you bring close to, who you bring close in your life. Jesus shows us this example. Jesus only had 12 disciples. There were only 12 who came close to Jesus. And even all 12 of them didn't come super close. It was only three who, who then would come super close. It was Peter, James, and John that Jesus took to the Mount of Transfiguration where they got to see this transfiguration take place. Only them, this transfiguration of Jesus take place. Only them, only those three. And it was those same three 
that Jesus brought to the Garden of Gethsemane to keep watch and pray, oh, and pray as he was praying before he went to the cross to be crucified. It shows us there that there were three that he brought even closer. And Peter was the one whom he chose to build his church upon after Peter reveals that he sees Jesus for who he really is, the Messiah. When Jesus asked, who do you, all these disciples here, he was saying to him, them, who do you think that I am? Other people say different things about me, a teacher, a prophet. Who do you say I am? And Peter is the only one that responds with a true answer, with the most correct answer, the Messiah. And that reveals that he was more spiritual, that his spiritual eyes were more open. And so we can see that Jesus could entrust him more than others. So we see Peter, we also see John coming so close to Jesus, like coming on his chest, the Bible says. So we, we see that there were even three that Jesus chose to bring in even closer. Not everybody, just those three. So Jesus chose us as an example that we are not called to bring everyone close to us in close friendship. And, and also when we do bring people in close, we should be very, very intentional. We should make sure it's Holy Spirit led that you're bringing this person in close because it becomes this tie. It's a serious thing. It's not something to be taken lightly. In the world, you take it lightly. Your friends, you chit chat, you hang with whoever. But as we are children of God, as we are spiritual, this is a serious deal. And also your friendships should be with intention. You shouldn't, once you're a believer, you shouldn't be friends and hang out with people just because it's fun. But we're here for a reason. We're here for a purpose. And we should, all of our relationships should, should be purposeful. You should only bring really close, really close friendships should be those who are equally yoked to you, meaning those who are surrendered to God, those who are serious about Him, who really love Him, who, who don't want to grieve Him, but fear Him. If you're not being intentional, it's it's very easy for wrong people to come in and there to be demonic soul ties formed. So let me give you an example of how a friendship can turn into a demonic soul tie happening to you. And that is if your friend you're with is, is unequally yoked, is not surrendered to God, sometimes that person will want to control you, maybe for whatever reason, whether it's they're afraid of losing you, they're afraid of being alone, or they, they want things in life so badly and they think that you will somehow help them get these things if you, do, if you help them do these things. Uh, they might try to begin to control you or manipulate you. Manipulation is witchcraft. Control is, is witchcraft. And so you might have found this behavior happening in, in other friendships you've, in friendships you've had before. An indicator that there's manipulation happening upon you, towards you, through that friend is when you notice that you care about what that person thinks of you so much. Like you don't want to upset them, you find yourself being people pleasing towards them and when maybe usually you're not a people pleaser at all, but it's like just that one person, you really care what they think and you really want them to be happy with you and not upset with you and it makes you feel really really bad if they are upset with you. So you might not stick your ground when you should be. You might not be saying no when you should be because you're people pleasing. Uh, that is an indicator that a person has been manipulating you, has been trying to control you. And when a person is doing that, that's when it, in the spiritual realm, it's this bad demonic soul tie being formed where you see it's literally a tie like they're they're trying to control you and you're just like going with it even though you don't want to and it can come to a point where you realize that you're like whoa i'm being controlled by the per this person i don't want this i don't want this person to control me and you can realize that and you can then you can might try to say no but you might find that you can't you might find that you're literally being controlled and that's when it becomes bondage like actual demonic yoke where you need deliverance. That, I mean, that's what yokes are, is when it's a chain. It's when you're trying, you're trying to not sin. You're trying so hard, but you're being controlled. That's why you need the anointing to destroy the yoke. The yoke should be destroyed because of the anointing. That's the importance of the anointing because being delivered is not a self-effort thing. It's not a crucify the flesh thing. It's receiving the anointing to set you free.
So these demonic soul ties can be in friendships and they can also be in sexual relationships or even romantic relationships. Some of you, maybe you've never even had a relationship with someone, a sexual or physical or romantic relationship with anybody, but maybe there was someone you had this obsessive crush on. And maybe you found that you felt like like maybe you didn't want to have sex till marriage because you were surrendered to God, but maybe you felt like, but if this person like wanted to s do something with me, I, I, I don't know how I would say no. I think I would just give in. Maybe you felt that before. That's an indicator that there's this demonic hook or tie that, was, that could have been put on you based, towards, based on you putting your eyes there so much. When it, when it was maybe an un, unequally yoked person, maybe this person was not a believer, but they were very physically attractive or something, you put your eyes there so much, that person, even if you're not actually dating or anything, sometimes they can even, with manipulation, put a, 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 a spiritual hook upon you to make you feel like, wow, I feel controlled, weird, I've never even been in a relationship with this person, but I feel like if they asked me to do something, I would just do it. Like, that is a demonic tie or hook there that you need freedom from. So that's why it's very important that to not lust after and to not put your eyes so much on someone. And especially like, um, like we as believers, we can decide, okay, we can make the decision, like I don't wanna be with anybody that's not a believer. I don't wanna have sex till marriage. But so when, but when you see someone that's very physically attractive and they're not a believer, you should be very careful to like not keep on putting your eyes there because that can be opening up a door to the, to, to the devil. A dangerous territory when someone's not a believer, like where you're putting your eyes. So make sure you just renounce that, you surrender that to God and you take your eyes away from that. Don't dwell on that person, on their physical looks and everything. When you are in a sexual relationship with someone, ties are definitely formed. The Bible says that you become one you become one when you have sex. This is why it's so important you don't have sex before marriage because there are ties being made. There is a, a deep, deep, deeper ties being made when you have sex with someone and you literally become, you're becoming one flesh. So it's, it's, it can bring demonic torment, demonic ties if you're sleeping with different people, sleeping before people before you're married. When you're having sex with someone outside of marriage, and they aren't surrendered or have demons, those demons can be coming to you. They could be transferred through sex because you're literally becoming one and you're just like opening yourself up to be one, to have a tie for whatever that person has to attach to you. And then when you want to break free from that person, there's a deep tie there because you've had sex, number one. And then number two, there could have been other soul tie-ish relationships there through manipulation and what have you or you just you want to be loved so much by this person and maybe you don't want to be lonely so it's this you put this wrong tie here where this person is going to be giving you love and the contentment you need and it's making there to be this tie when God's calling you to be free and you just feel stuck so it's it's for our good it's it's God giving us direction for us to be free of demonic soul ties, be free of demons, to not have sex before marriage. Another demonic tie that can happen is a spiritual spouse. So there are sometimes demons can come into a person and become a, a spiritual spouse. So where they, like a demon literally decides to, decides they want to attach themselves sexually to that person and that demon can be be jealous of people so if you have a husband or if you are interested in someone and you're not married yet they can become really jealous and and just attack your intimacy with another person um, and spiritual spouses they they sleep with people they I mean People will ha people who have spiritual ha spouses have dreams that it, that that it, demon is having sex with them, and they can even wake up and and feel that they've been touched 
literally, I've had so many people come to my services sharing this, that this is what they're going through. This is a spiritual spouse. That the way that that can attach can be through sex, it can be through masturbation, it can be through um, the devil coming in that way one time and maybe the person not rejecting it. Or maybe they liked it, liked being touched in the night and waking up and allowing it to continue. That's a way it could come. And um, I mean, it can come anyways. It could come through a, a sexual abuse of some way. And, and it's like every night you're having these demonic dreams of sexual dreams. But God wants to free you. If you're watching right now and you have a demonic soul tie of, from a friend, from a friendship, from someone you lusted after, someone who you've had sex with, a spiritual spouse, God is going to deliver you right now from all of these demonic soul ties. So the way to be free from these demonic soul ties is number one, to renounce these, these demonic soul ties. And also, if a person is manipulating you, renounce that and, and say to God, I don't want to be controlled by this person. I don't want to please them. I don't, want, I don't want any of that manipulation upon me from that person anymore. Surrender that to God. Renounce that. The second step is if you have received items from this friend or this sexual partner or past relationship, past romantic relationship, it's important you ask the Holy Spirit, what is it important that I get rid of that they've given me, that there's ties attached to them? Some of you may feel it's important to get rid of everything. That could be the case for many of you. There's certain things that might have really significant meanings to your ties together, like rings. Like there was one woman who, she, was already, she had already been divorced at this point, um, but she felt a tie still to a past husband. And she got rid of her wedding ring at Fivefold Church. She threw it away. And the moment she did, the power of God hit her and she was delivered. So demons can, and demonic soul ties can be attached to physical objects. Um, and, this, and, and so jewelry many times, rings, if, if a person, especially if they were manipulating you, if they gave you something, um, they could have given you with an intention of like, you're mine. I don't want you to go anywhere. Uh, like if you feel that coming from them and they gave you something, that a demonic soul tie could be attached to that. So it's important you take it seriously and look at your possessions, your items that have been given to you by these friends or whatever relationships they were, romantic relationships, and that you get rid of them. You, 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 you say, I detach myself from this object, whatever that is, and that you throw it away. And if you even want to grab this quickly right now, or if you are able to put this on pause right now, you can go grab these items right now. I'm going to pray over you. Um, if you can't do that in time, if you can't do that right now, I'm going to pray that what you're about to throw away, you're going to be detached from. So you can renounce right now. You can speak, I renounce this relationship with this person, this demonic soul tie. You can renounce those things right now. I detach you from what you have renounced and I break every demonic soul tie in Jesus' name. I command every spirit attached to that demonic soul tie, every spirit of witchcraft, manipulation, every spirit that came in through abuse, every spiritual spouse must leave now in Jesus' name. I detach you now from all of the items that were attached to that demonic soul tie. I command now every spirit attached to that item must leave you now in Jesus' name. I declare you are free now. You are no longer controlled. There's no hook or tie attached to you anymore. What's important for you to do right now is to end the relationship if you're still in the relationship. Before, you might have been controlled where you wanted to end the relationship, but you just couldn't get the words out. You just couldn't do it. It's because you were controlled. It's because of that yoke that was there. But the yoke, the chain is gone now. So now there's nothing holding you back. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you to give you strength, to give you words, to encourage, to 
speak what you need to say, to say no, to end the relationship that God's asking you to. What you should do immediately, as soon as possible, is to end that relationship and then to do as God leads, to shut every door, whether it's getting rid of the phone number off your phone, blocking their phone number even, um, removing them off social media, whatever God is leading you to do to maintain your freedom that you have now. So no demon comes back to bring that soul tie again. It's important you take this seriously. I declare nothing can stop this soul tie from coming back. You are free in Jesus' name. And I declare godly, equally yoked believers, friends to come in your life now in Jesus' name. Those of you whom it's God's will for you to have a husband, have a wife, I declare doors to open in the spiritual realm and for equally yoked, a godly spouse would come that you would know, that you would recognize, that you would see them with God's eyes in his perfect timing and that you would rest and be patient in his perfect timing. That you would rest and know that he knows the desires of your heart. And as you delight in him, he will give you those desires in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's an example now of someone being freed of demonic soul ties. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with this anointing. Be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, be filled with his peace and joy now. Jesus is amazing! Isn't he? He is here! He is here. alive! And, er is, and he's er setting leben. free the und captives today! And he er, er brings the Gefangenen free! This is so powerful! Jesus is so powerful! Jesus is so powerful! That all demons are exposed and have to leave today! And now we have to leave today! And now we have to leave today! Stand up! Stand up! Come! Come here! Come here! Come! Come here. Come. You can't do that. Come. Come here. You can't do that. Come. Oh. <laughs> Allow him to speak now. Allow him to speak now. I did a lot of satanic things. I also read the satanic Bible. And I have read a lot of horror movies. I watched a lot of horror movies. And I renounce everything in Jesus' name. And I had a soul tie that wasn't right with a woman who was in witchcraft. I also had sex with her and had blood that came out. And I renounce that in Jesus' name. Every soul tie is, is um, broken in Jesus' name. I break every generational curse off you. Ich breche jede Generationsfluch. I, I break every curse of witchcraft sent upon you. Ich breche jeden Hexenfluch, der über dich gesetzt ist. I cancel every demonic covenant ich breche, that he made. Ich breche jeden dämonischen Bund, der er gemacht hat. I cancel every demonic covenant he made with the words he spoke as he was reading this satanic book. Ich breche jeden dämonischen Fluch, den du gemacht hast, während du das satanische Buch gelesen hast. I break every demonic soul tie. Ich breche jede dämonische Seelenbindung. I cancel every curse that every witch sent to him. I detach him from all he has renounced now. Ich nehme dich davon von allem weg, was du gerade widerrufen hast. And I command on three every spirit attached, every spirit of witchcraft, every satanic spirit must leave him on three in Jesus' name. One, two, three. So much that he's freed you. So sehr, dass er dich frei gemacht hat. And you will serve God. Und du wirst Gott dienen. God has amazing plans for you. Gott hat unglaubliche Pläne für dich. He's forgiven you completely. Er hat dir vollkommen vergeben. He wants to use you in power. Und er will dich in, in, in Kraft gebrauchen. So what is this? It's a stone for healing. Do you willingly want to surrender it to Jesus right now by the conviction of the Holy Spirit? 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. I remove the attachment I had to this object. I surrender to Jesus. I put my faith in Jesus alone. Hallelujah. Now you can throw it out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I declare every demonic power, Kittenheimer, please, every demonic power attached to, because of this object, I break it now in Jesus' name. I declare every demonic spirit to go now in Jesus' name. Everyone out of her now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Everyone go. Every, you can't say anymore because it was thrown away. You have to go now. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Thank you, God. Out of her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Out of her, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. I declare that you are free now in Jesus' name. You are free from every demonic power attached to that ring now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. My name's Demarie. I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior in high school. And Jesus set me free August 2021 on Apostle Catherine's Zoom prayer. And I am still set free to this day. I am set free from a demonic soul tie, witchcraft, and the spirit of manipulation. And I am now walking in truly abundant life. And ever since that day, my heart has just been, I just want to please the Lord. And I just want souls to be saved and people to be set free. To encounter Him just like how I had. Oh, I'm telling you, my heart burns so much for that. This is the Lord's will for everyone. He wants everyone to be set free. He wants everyone to be walking in signs, wonders, and miracles. Revival is truly now. And revival is rising up for the youth generation as well. Hallelujah. I am truly grateful for Apostle Catherine and what the Lord is doing through her. And I'm telling you all that revival is truly now. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you on the next episode. Revival is now. Revival is now, your